I'm a Christian black man. Six months ago, I didn't like politics, and I didn't like Trump. But this November, I'm gonna vote for him. My name's Terrence, I'm a coach, and I help men become the best version of themselves while pointing them to Christ. I've been a Democrat my entire life, primarily because my parents were Democrats, and that's who they recommended I vote for. My hottie wife is very involved in politics, and she asked me why I'm a Democrat. I let her know. She said, a lot of things have changed with the party that your parents supported, and you need to do your research so you can make an informed decision. She then asked me a set of questions. I told her my thoughts, and she said, everything you just said are Republican values. You need to do your research. I started doing my own research, and I quickly realized that I do not like political pundits, and I do not like the news media. Why? Because they both infuse their opinions when they talk, and they tend to talk negatively about those who do not hold their views. So. I decided to do research by listening to full candidate speeches and checking voting records. I wanted to hear what the candidates had to say directly, as well as see the policies they actually backed. While doing this, I had revelation on what politics really is and the type of government that we're actually under as Christians. My revelation about politics is that politics is hiring somebody to implement ideas that are in alignment with you and your values. I believe most people, including myself, primarily hire people based upon how we perceive them and not on voting records or policies. It's important that we take the time to do our own research on what the people we choose to hire actually believe and that we check on whether or not they've done the job that we've hired them for by looking at their voting records. What gets inspected gets accomplished. If they're not doing what we've hired them to do, then they need to be replaced. As Christians, the government that we're truly under is called a theocracy. Theocracy literally means the rule of God. It doesn't matter if you were born in the United States, China, or the Congo. God and his word is the ultimate authority. Everything is under God. Of course, we can't directly have God reign in this world, so we have to read what the Bible has written about topics and then choose a government body or leaders that will implement something that is closest in alignment to what our theocracy states. In the United States, we have what's called a constitutional republic, which is a government in which we elect leaders with limited power that vote on and execute policies on our behalf. As Christians, we are to choose politicians who will support and implement the agendas that are in alignment with our theocracy. I 100% believe that the United States was based upon Judeo-Christian values. There's a lot of evidence to support that our founding fathers had this belief system and that these ideals were the core of our foundational beliefs. While our country's past is imperfect, this philosophy and values allowed us to create immense wealth at an unprecedented rate. Our country went from a group of ragtag settlers to the top superpower in the world in about 200 years. There's been no other nation in the history of humanity that's been able to accomplish that. I believe we were able to do this because the hand of God was upon us. There's a reason why on our money it says, in God we trust. There are a lot of issues on the ballot. Border security, energy independence, fentanyl, sex trafficking, censorship of the media and the press. All of these are important topics that I encourage you to research before voting. But today, we're gonna talk about three issues directly addressed in our theocracy, abortion, gender, and Israel. I surveyed 15 people of different ethnic backgrounds, genders, and religious beliefs about their political affiliations and what I believe are Bible-based questions. It wasn't a scientific study, but I wanted to get an idea of what people were thinking. All the people who identified as Christians answered everything almost the exact same, despite whatever they claimed as their political affiliation. Which means these Christians supported their theocracy before they supported any particular political party. I'm gonna ask you some questions, and then I will tell you what the Bible has written about them and then share the positions of the Republican Party and the Democratic Party regarding these questions. Question one, abortion beliefs. Apart from rape, incest, or threat of life, do you believe abortion is something that should take place? The Bible reads, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Psalm 139, 13. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1.5 Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. Psalms 127.3-5a the Republican Party has a pro-life stance. Abortion should be limited to extreme cases. The Democratic Party has a pro-choice stance. Abortion can be done for whatever reason a person wants. Question two, sex and gender. Apart from a person being born with two sets of sex organs, i.e. a hermaphrodite, do you believe there are two sexes or that there are more than two genders? The Bible reads, so God created mankind in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1, 27. Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female? Matthew 19, 4. He created them male and female and blessed them, and he named them mankind when they were created. Genesis 5, 2. The Republican Party believe there are two sexes, male and female, and two genders, man and woman. The Democratic Party believe there may be only two sexes, male and female, but gender is completely up to the person and can be whatever a man, woman, or child decides. Question three, Israel support. What are your thoughts about the United States supporting Israel? What should that support be or not be? The Bible reads, and this is regarding Israel, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12, 3. I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. Joel 3, 2. On that day, when the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. Zechariah 12, 3. The Republican Party supports Israel and considers them to be an important ally. The Democratic Party claims to support Israel, but they're encouraging Israel to take actions that the leaders of Israel say will hurt their nation. If you are a Christian Democrat, the reason to switch to the Republican Party is because its values are in alignment with the Bible. The Republican values regarding abortion, gender, and Israel all align with the Bible. The Democratic values don't. As a Christian black man, here are three of the biggest pieces of opposition that I have heard regarding my new perspective. Number one, Donald Trump is a racist who hates black people. Number two, Donald Trump is a dictator who wants to end social security. Number three, as a Christian, it's okay for me to support the Democratic Party because I won't actually go against any of my Bible-based values, even if the party does. First point, Donald Trump is a racist who hates black people. It's kind of funny because a lot of black people used to like Trump. I used to like him, my dad used to like him, and even Oprah Winfrey used to like him. Google it, there are a lot of pictures of them hanging out. Also, as a supposed racist against black people, Trump did a lot of things during his presidency to specifically help black colleges. In 2019, Trump signed into law the Future Act, making permanent an additional $255 million in annual funding for minority-serving institutions, including $85 million a year for historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs. In 2020, Trump also signed the HBCU Partner Act, which required certain federal agencies to submit annual plans documenting how they'd make their grant programs more accessible to HBCUs. Recently, I viewed a video of Trump being greeted by a young black woman named Michaela Montgomery while at an Atlanta Chick-fil-A. She said, I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump, we support you. Second point, Donald Trump is a dictator who wants to end social security. Remember, you can go back and look at his last term. Was he a dictator? No. Did he end social security? No. He didn't do it before, so what makes you think he's gonna do it now? What I know for sure is that some politicians do not get a fair shake from the news media. If you don't believe this, watch an entire full speech from a candidate and then go and watch a news media breakdown of what you just saw. The two will not match. Remember, when you take the text out of context, all you're left with is a con. Third point, as a Christian, it's okay for me to support the Democratic Party because I won't actually go against any of my Bible-based values, even if the party does. This goes against our mandate as children of God. We are called to be salt and light in this world and the hands and feet of Jesus. Salt heals and protects and light illuminates the darkness. Jesus said that we should pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10, and anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. John 14, 23 through 24 a. God's will is clearly written in his word. It's not just me, my four and no more. It's me, my four and the people forevermore. As Christians, we know that God is good, that he has good plans for us and our families, but there are millions of people who do not realize this. And if they are not being taught the word of God or being led by people who believe in the word of God, then they have a much greater chance of going down a dark path and receiving consequences and destruction that could have been avoided if somebody had told them the truth in love and those people had supported policies that would bring the truth to our nation. 
We are to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Part of preaching the gospel is living the gospel and promoting truths that are in alignment with it. If we support policies that are willfully against the word of God, then we are directly hurting those who do not know Jesus, and we are lessening their chances to ever be saved, making heaven their home and avoiding eternity in hell. Here's a final thought. Let's say I'm hiring for a company, but there's only two people available for the job. One person who applied, I heard doesn't like me, but I know that person will do the things that I care about. On the other hand, the second person who applied, I heard loves me, but I know that person is gonna tear down everything I believe in. Who am I gonna hire? If you aren't a Christian and you're bothered by what I'm saying, I completely understand. I love you and I appreciate you listening. But if you are a Christian and you're bothered by what I'm saying, take the time to pray about this. Pray to God, Lord, why am I so bothered by this? What do you want me to do during this election season and how should I vote? Let's end in prayer. Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone who's listening to the sound of my voice. Thank you, Lord, for blessing them. Thank you, Lord, for giving them supernatural wisdom and discernment for what they should do for this next election season and for who you want them to vote for. In the name of Jesus, amen. My name is Terrence. I love you. God bless you. And God bless America.